successes. Norwich have been in four finals, twice as winners. Their victory over Rochdale in 1962 evoked local rejoicing rather than nationwide admiration. It took another ten years for Norwich to claim a place in the limelight again. The country cousins won the second division title. Jim Bone, signed from Partick Thistle to lift City's run-in, went on to score their first ever goal in Division 1. But the yo-yo syndrome struck. Relegation in 1973, promotion again in 75, with Peter Morris a driving force in midfield. This too was the Ted McDougall era. Three Queen's Park Rangers for the one ball, McDougall, it's there! McDougall's 22nd goal of the season. Then, for five years, there was Martin Peters. Peters. Oh! Really swerving ball, and Martin Peters beating John Mahoney. In the early 80s, Norwich were making news as sellers. Kevin Reeves bought for £50,000, sold for a million. Reeves! Another million pounds went into the Carrow Road account for Justin Fashionu. Ryan. Fashion oh, oh, what a goal! Oh, that's a magnificent goal! The man behind the latest Norwich rise is manager David Stringer. He made 499 appearances for City as a player, many alongside Duncan Forbes, now the club's chief scout. We used to play at the back together. I was always a noisy one and he, he was a quiet one and he, he was a kind of steady influence on me and we... We used to, the reason we were successful together because we, we talked a lot in the park and he got on with his game quietly and I, once again, as you probably realise, I was fairly an aggressive sort of player. I stood on the terraces here at Carrow Road for 20 years or so and during that time I saw no one play with more commitment for Norwich than David Stringer. He lived one side of Yarmouth and I lived the other. Apart from anything else, he had that strike of steel in him that was needed to do the job at that time. And if anybody could have pulled us together and avoided relegation, it was him. He's a solid sort of manager and he, he works very hard at his job. He's not, uh, he's not a, a flamboyant uh, manager. He is, the way they play the game, he wants the, the game played simply. He wants, uh, he wants total football. We play right from, from the back, the goalkeeper throwing the ball out. Uh, and the, he's decided that's the way that Norwich City are going to play the football. He, he appointed uh, David Williams, uh, he reorganised the football management side completely, and uh, he must also take a great deal of credit for that, and I'm sure he would be the first to recognise that uh, our success this year, uh, to some large extent, uh, is to the team, the management team that he's got together and that he heads. Stringer's predecessor, Ken Brown, gave Norwich a spell of passing acclaim in the 1985 League Cup. Good play by John Dean, it's still in. Shannon, the tackle. Oh, and it's an own goal. Came off Chisholm. But another yo-yo season saw Norwich follow their Wembley success with relegation two months later. Brown and his assistant, Mel Machin, jerked the string, and City came straight back up as second division champions. In the autumn, they briefly led the first division, but 15 months later, relegation threatened again. Machin had gone to Manchester City, and Ken Brown, the Ken everybody loved, was sacked. I've been crying with you all the week. How do you know I've been crying? Well, well I saw you on television, you started me off. Oh, no, and then I know, that's somebody else. <laughs> that's all that word. I, I wish you all the best. It was a difficult time, it was a very difficult decision to make. And I remember the uh, morning when I gave David a ring at half past seven and told him what I was going to do. Uh, asked him to meet me at the club at half past eight. Uh, you know, I was quite positive. I knew which way we were going. We'd had several difficult months to think about it, hadn't we? Stringer and his assistant, David Williams, have opened vistas to a new era. For most of this season, Norwich have been genuine contenders in the First Division and the FA Cup. Black. Townsend, no, oh, I say. This is the man who scored the best so far, Andy Townsend, and he might well get another. He has. Oh, I say, that's quite brilliant. Townsend.
end, it's going to go back to Putney. And Allen came in! And that's a splendid goal for Malcolm Allen. Still Putney, tried to curl it, it hit Pratt. Allen, goal! That's his hat-trick. Both of us believe in a passing game. Um, it's entertaining because people like to see it, but we're not playing it purely for entertainment. We're playing it with the intention of going forward and creating opportunities to score. That's the basis of our game. Oh, good ball by Crook. Here's Allen. And that's eight. And four for Malcolm Allen. Bowen. As if he might get bogged down. That's a run forward by Gillen. Defence is back on it. We're into the last five minutes. Norwich City 2, West Ham 1. The flag stays down. This is Dale Gordon. Norwich City are in the semi-finals. I only hope, you know, for everybody's sake, that it's a good game, a good uh, entertaining game for the fans, if you like, but a successful one for Norwich City because, you know, it's something that um, the club has wanted, I suppose, and the fans have wanted over the years since the 59 Cup run you've talked about. But Everton haven't lost to Norwich since the East Anglians were last promoted. In 1986, they thrashed them in the Littlewoods Cup. 17 days later, they hammered them in the league. And at the end of the season, this goal at Carrow Road made Everton champions. Precedents Norwich fans will want to ignore. Their league aspirations have been shaken by three successive defeats. To lose now in the cup would suggest another toy for the terraces. In place of inflated canaries, deflated yo-yos. So how does Dave Stringer view his challenge to City's past? You don't deserve anything. You earn things in football. But it would be a sad thing for the players, all the work they put in. It would be a sad thing for all the people that have worked hard off the pitch, Dave Williams and the, we call them the team off the pitch, if you like. Um, we'd like something to show for it. If it doesn't happen, then we've got to do it again. We've got to look to next year. We have the opportunity. It's our chance. And I'm going to do all I can to grasp it. Good luck to them. Gerald Sinstat, our reporter, with